God created man in his own image. He created a male and female. He created them. Notice them, male and female. Then the Lord said, Lord God made a woman from the rib of Adam. This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. We all know what that's talking about, one flesh. The, the man and the wife were both naked and felt no shame. This is God's design. What does this mean? Sexual desire is normal. God designed us with sexual desire. God designed, designed it this way. It is not a sin to have sexual desire. But the desire is to be governed by godly judgment. And then man is not male. Man is male and female in God's design. Notice the scripture. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. If you read other versions, it makes it very straight. They were created male and female. Man was created. So man in God's design, it takes maleness and femaleness to represent rightly the Godhead. Maleness or femaleness alone is not a full revelation of God's design. Because part of God's design is for them to be fruitful and multiply. Maleness alone, femaleness alone cannot be fruitful and multiply. There's no procreation there. Part of God's design is that we re- reveal Him as the Creator. So it takes both to represent the God. So why was it not good for Adam to be alone? At, at day one, it is good. Day two, it is good. Three, four, five, six, it is not good that man, that Adam, should be alone. Because he was created in God's image. And God's image is the image of love, which is the image of giving. And so we have this distorted idea that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone because Adam needed to help me. Someone to, you know, do his laundry and cook his meals and bring him the ranch while he's under the hood. But that is not what it means. And i got to tell you, I had somebody in my office today, a woman in my office today, who is in a marriage where her husband thinks it's very much. They're very, very religious people, go to church every week, and in her marriage, she is the helper to help him do what he wants. And there's a hierarchical relationship there. This is not what this means. God, man, uh, Eve was made as a helper for Adam to help him with one thing. Understanding God's nature of love... Adam could not enter into other-centered love without someone for Adam to serve. Without someone for Adam to sacrifice himself for. Without someone for Adam to give himself to lift up and benefit. So Eve was recreated to help Adam enter into what it's like for God to give himself to love others more than himself. And Eve was to receive that love and let it flow back through her to Adam again. A never-ending circle of other-centered love, the Godhead in microcosm. That's God's design for a loving marriage. So what went wrong? Adam and Eve sinned. What happened? Lies believed break the circle of love and trust. You're in a healthy, loving marriage. Somebody close to you, your own mother, father, brother, sister, comes to you and tells you a lie that your spouse is having an affair. Now, it's not true. No truth in it whatsoever. But if you believe the lie, does something inside of you change? If you believe your spouse is cheating. Love and trust is broken. This is what happened in, the, in Eden. Lies were believed, love and trust was broken. Um, lies believed, broken love and trust result in fear and selfishness. God, I don't believe you've really got my good interests at heart. I believe that you're trying to keep me down. Satan's lie to Adam and Eve. Therefore, I can't trust you anymore. I'm afraid of you. So I've got to watch out for myself. I better get that fruit before I, or I lose my chance to get ahead. Fear and selfishness in the world today is known as survival of the fittest. This instinct to watch out for number one. This instinct to hurt others to protect self. And then fear and selfishness results in destructive acts, what we call sins, the bad things we do, which are the symptoms of this, of this broken love and trust, this heart condition of, of fear and selfishness. And these destructive acts result in damage to, to mind, health, and character, which is a terminal condition. Christ said in Matthew 5, you say if you commit adultery, do a bad act. You've committed sin. I say if you lust after a woman in your heart, you've already committed adultery. What is he telling us? That the bad behavior is symptom of sick hearts. And when the hearts are right, the behavior goes right. So we have these two antagonistic principles on on earth now that each one of us are struggling with. God's principle of love, greater love is no man that he give his life for a friend which means I love you so much I'll do whatever I have to for your health and welfare and beneficence, including, if it comes down to it, give my life that you might live. At war with Satan's principle of survival, the fittest based on fear and insecurity, 
which says, I love myself so much, I'll do whatever I have to to promote and protect myself, including if it comes down to it, kill you that I might live. Give my life that you might live, kill you that I might live. The love versus the fear battle in each of our hearts.